And um, so I made up a, a dummy. I was on, it was on um, my Christmas vacation from my, uh, uh, between my uh, sophomore and junior year. And um, I made up a, a, a dummy that was just a fake newspaper with squares in it for advertisers. And I went around town to the motels and restaurants in the spring and the uh, um, people that own some of the you know, miniature golf or whatever. And I said, you want to buy this, I'm going to publish five issues in 10 weeks, and it's going to cost you $100, which was today would be about $1,000 for the summer. <clears throat> and I sold it out. And I had already done the math, and I knew what the printing was going to cost. I had a printer. I'd done printing in, in, uh, um, in high school. I'd been to print shops. At that time, printing uh, was done with hot lead and, and, and uh, uh, gas flames under it to keep, keep it hot in cauldrons. And uh, it was really quite a very um, messy ink would get all over everybody and everything. And uh, it was very, I thought it was a very romantic kind of uh, way to spend the day. So I went around and I did that and the paper was, and I also decided and it had never been done before uh, but uh, in a commercial level. It had been done in colleges. I'd seen it here. Uh, there were free newspapers. The Campus Times it was in stacks. You could pick it up. It was free, but it wasn't a viably commercial thing. And I thought, in this motel town, the way tourists are going to read about restaurants and miniature golf and whatever is in a stack on the cigarette machine, pardon me, in the lobby of all the motels. That's what I put. I put them in all in the lobbies, and that sort of seemed to have founded a whole way of life with free newspapers. Um, in any case, I had this um, exchange with Harry Freelander in high school, the high school English teacher teaching us about journalism. And then I came here, and uh, uh, my freshman teacher uh, for our English course, before I even chose my major, was Dr. Gowan. And I didn't think much of it at the time, except that I liked him. And um, uh, I took classes and decided eventually to become an English major. And meantime, what was being published here at that time was uh, a humor magazine called UG, which had been started a few years earlier. And um, of course, the Campus Times, which at that time, and I have one with me, and the headline says, Finance Board Accuses UG of Misusing Funds. Gee, I wonder what that was about. And um, uh, they had, at that time, we were in um, um, the old student union. Uh, what was the name of that? Todd. Todd Union, which was crowded even then with activities. And the newspaper had three rooms on the second floor. And there was a former slop closet that they had, they had capped off the water and put a desk in it next in the, off the hall uh, next to the, the Campus Times offices. And that was the humor magazine office. It was about six feet <coughs> by eight feet deep. And um, after I, in my, uh, um, I found, I, I I, I, w I was asked to become the editor of it. We were publishing twice a year, so it wasn't a lot. But I thought that was kind of great. I'd like, I wanted to do that. I was drawing cartoons and I was doing other things. And we went home. Uh, I, I was, they were selected in the, in the fall, you know, for the next spring. No, in, in the fall, in the, in the spring for the following September. And uh, I went back and um, immediately found that the um, Campus Times was announced and had started a humor column twice a week in the, in the newspaper and was writing editorials saying that the uh, humor magazine should be uh, dismantled and not given its finance board funding for this year. There was going to be a meeting in three weeks. And instead, the humor magazine, uh, the, the Campus Times would be happy to publish all the humor on the campus that anybody could ever want. And um, the staff told me about this, and I said, why are they doing this? And one of them said, I know why, because I also work there. They want the, that closet for a dark room. Um, so I didn't know what to do. Uh, we came out with an issue, and they continued attacking it. 
And after we came out, they began writing articles about the material in it, which was beyond belief awful. It was irreverent. Irreverent was probably the wrong word. It was disgusting. It wasn't the kind of thing that should represent the University of Rochester at all. And so um, by that time, I had already published the first year of the summer of, of uh, with a paper out in Montauk, so I knew all about publishing a newspaper. I was also submitting cartoons to the uh, Campus Times twice a week, and they were running them in their issues by slipping them under the door of their office. I had no interest in working on the newspaper. I wanted to do the humor magazine. And um, we had a big meeting about this right after the first issue came out uh, that um, October. The Finance Board was going to meet in about two weeks. And um, so I said, we have to do something about this. And we talked about it. And we decided, I actually thought it up, why don't we publish a Campus Times ourselves? Why don't we go to their printer when they're not there and print up a Campus Times using all their logos and all their things? And when they print their regular paper, um, we would be here on campus at the bins, at the men's, you know, uh, the, at the cafeteria, at the um, Susan B. Anthony, at uh, Todd Union, at, right at the bins with it, our people and our newspaper, and we would as the as and we would re, we would swap out our newspaper for theirs, and we would write basically that the Humor Magazine, we've changed our minds. The Humor Magazine really is a good publication and uh, we think it should be allowed to continue. That was the essence of this whole plot. And um, I called, I, I don't know what gave me the nerve to do this, I called up their printer and found that he thought this was a great idea. <laughs> Here he was about to risk a very large contract. He told me that he would call us when the coast was clear, and we could come, we'd have to be there at night, and, uh, uh, and the other rule, he had two other rules. One, he wanted to be paid in advance, and the other rule was that he wanted us not to molest his truck driver when they came by with the bundles of the, uh, the to-be-confiscated issue. We should allow him to put the paper into the bins and then leave. And then you can do whatever you want, because it's a free paper. Who could object to anything like that? Well, in thinking about it, we began to have lots of fun with articles we wanted to write. Uh, one of them that I wrote, I'm very proud of this publication. They don't have it upstairs. I have one home. I'm going to send it to them. Um, I wrote an editorial uh, that was written by one of the staff members of the Campus Times who worked there, who had discovered enormous amount of swindling going on by the editor-in-chief of the Campus Times, and that the, these guys who were running the, the publication of the Campus Times were over 18, they were going to be indicted and put in jail, and all the details of what this was all about would be in their next issue. Um, and the kind of thing that made it appear really real were two things. One was, we announced that uh, uh, was, uh, Jackie Kennedy was going to come to a tea at uh, Todd Union. And this was very much in keeping with the kind of thing that was going on at that time. So that gave it a certain truth, truthiness. The other thing which I thought was much more interesting, uh, which we ran as our front page, about uh, the prior semester, uh, the University of Pittsburgh had gone on the tri-semester system, announcing that uh, there would only be one month vacation, there would be three semesters of school, uh, summer vacation would be in the month of August. And um, we didn't think much of it, except we, you know, the newspaper wrote something about it, whether it was a, they thought it was a bad idea or whatever. So we announced it. We announced in, in this issue, which came out in uh, February, that the following September, U of R was going to be on the tri-semester system. There would be no more summer vacation. Uh, I also, uh, to make that appear absolutely real, I said that we had spoken to the president, uh, DeKiewit, at the time by telephone to confirm that this was true. So I was that urgent as a reporter to do my diligence and find out that indeed this was the case. 